All right, welcome back to the second lesson of our tutorial series on how to create 2048 in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be creating the blocks that fill the cells of our 2048 grid. We'll then code a spawning system for instantiating them into our game. Now, if you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. If you're on our website, you can click the YouTube icon up at the top and it'll take you directly to our channel and ask you if you'd like to subscribe. But now let's get on to the lesson. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is create the object that we'll be instantiating into our 2048 cell. And to do this, I'm gonna start with a UI button. So I'm gonna right click on one of the cells, go down to UI, and then select button. We can then change the width and height of this button so that it matches the same as our cell. So that's going to be 110 by 110. We're then going to remove the button component from this object because we really only wanted the image component and the text child. I'm then going to select that text child and we can add in some padding on all four sides. So I'm gonna make it 10. I'm then going to enable best fit and I'm gonna delete the text value. I'm then going to rename this button object. We'll call it fill prefab and we'll make a prefab out of it by dragging it into the prefabs folder. We can then remove it from our scene. At this point, let's create the script for randomly instantiating this fill prefab object. So I'm going to right click on our assets folder, go to create, we'll select folder. I'm gonna name this folder scripts. I'll then select that folder, right click, go to create, C sharp script, and we'll name this game controller 2048 and we'll open it up once you have the script open the first thing that we need to do is create some new variables and the first variable will be to hold that prefab object we'll make this a serialized build and it'll be type game object and we'll call it fill prefab the next variable will actually be an array of transforms. So this will also be a serialized build and we'll type transform, then square brackets to make it an array and we'll call it all cells. Once we have these variables, we'll create the function for instantiating these fill prefabs. And so this is going to be a public function just in case we need to call it in another script. It'll have the return type void and let's call it spawn fill. Now in 2048, there's three possible outcomes for instantiating a new fill object. The first is that it won't instantiate any object. The second is that it'll instantiate one with the value of two. And the third is that it'll instantiate a fill object with the value of four. Now to do this, we wanna have some sort of percentage chance for doing each option. And so we'll create a new local variable of type float and we'll call it chance. And we'll set it equal to random.range and we'll pass in 0f and 1f. So this will randomly generate a float value between 0 and 1 and now we can break that value down into different percentages. So the first percentage will be for doing nothing and so this will be if chance and we'll say is less than 0.2f then we'll just return. We'll then do an else if for instantiating a fill object with the value of two. And we'll check if chance is less than 0.8f. Now because this is an else if statement, chance has to be between 0.2 and 0.8. Inside this if statement, we first need to pick at random which transform we want to instantiate a new fill object on. So we need to create another local variable, but this will be an int and we'll call it which spawn and we'll set it to random dot range. We'll pass in zero and all cells dot length. And we'll now instantiate a fill prefab. So I'm going to create a local variable of type game object. We'll call it temp fill. And we'll set it equal to instantiate. We'll then pass in fill prefab and then we'll pass in all cells, square brackets, which spawn. 
And the last thing that we'll do in this if statement for now is debug the value of the fill. And so we'll say debug.log and we'll pass in a two. Now there's one more if statement that we need to create. This will just be an else statement actually. And we can actually copy these three lines of code from our other if statement. I'll paste it in here and then we'll change the debug.log from two to four. So now that we have this function created, we need a way to execute it. And so for now, I'm just going to use an input check in our update function. So I'm going to check to see if input.getKey down keycode.space and then we'll call spawn fill. Now before we save this script, let's add one more line of code to our spawn fill function and this will be after we set the chance variable. And we just want to debug.log the chance variable. This way we know something's happening even if it's just returning without instantiating a new fill object. So now let's go ahead and save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Now we need to attach our game controller 2048 script to an object in our scene. And so I'm just going to attach it to my game panel. We then need to set our variables, and so I'm going to select our prefab folder, and then I'll select our fill prefab and drag it into the fill prefab variable. And then we need to set our all cells array, and so I'm going to expand it. And you can actually lock the inspector by clicking on this padlock up here. And then I'll select all the cell objects in order, and we'll just drag it into the all cells array. Okay, so at this point we can now play our project and test it out. So now when I press the space bar, you can see that it's instantiated a fill object into this cell. And if I keep pressing the space bar, nothing happened that time, but we did get a debug message to the console, and you can see that the value of the chance variable is less than 0.2. So nothing would happen. Now let's press it again. We got another one, and it looks like both our fill objects have the value of 2. Let's see if we can get a 4. Another two, and it looks like this one instantiated in the same cell as a previous one. And that's because we don't have a check to see if that cell is already filled, but we'll be doing that later in the future. So I'm going to keep pressing space, and there we go. We finally got a fill with the value of four. And so it looks like our random spawn generator is working, and this is a good place to stop for this lesson. Hey, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you learned something new like how to randomly instantiate objects into your scene, then make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. Also remember to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.